So after that, um, here comes AJ Styles and Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson, the original club. Let it go. When I couldn't have the Midnight Express and Smoky Mountain Wrestling, I didn't call another team the Afternoon Express or the Morning Express or the Daily Bugle or whatever. The I just changed the Express. goddamn to Stop and Go Express. Come and go. I just changed the fucking team name entirely. The club is over. And I'm not talking about overpopular. I'm talking about overdone with. Who gives a shit? What is the, to a modern WWE audience, what does the original club mean? They even say the, the OC, and they have on the, the Titantron, the only club that matters. What? What are the dues? Do you get a, a card? Do you have to wear a t-shirt? The whole club. You have to be a part sense. in the. Mo you have to be a part of the most boring and lame wrestling faction ever. But it's in Japan. Well, and that's the thing. The, they're they're trying to refer to something that got over it. And as AEW has proven to the WWE, I would think by this point, that a wrestling promotion cannot exist or subsist just on the amount of Japanese wrestling fans there are in the United States of America. And this was a bunch of different people in the Bullet Club that they don't have the trademark to. So they try, instead of doing their own fucking thing in the biggest promotion in the world that dwarfs New Japan by multiple times, they still want to be the original club and do Hall and Nash's fucking Wolfpack Too Sweet bullshit. Why do why do other people shit? Why talk about something that you were once a, a replacement part in, not even an original part of the fucking thing? Do other people's hand signs from twenty five years ago when they're st they're doing biographies on A and E Network on the motherfuckers that you stole the fucking hand sign from? So are you a tribute act? Are you a cover band? I don't, I don't, why do other more famous people shit? Why call yourself, hamper yourself, hamstring yourself with a fucking name, the original club that nobody in today's modern day and age that wasn't watching the Bullet Club seven years ago or whenever the fuck it was understands a shit to begin with. And I said, well, when they bring in Gallows and Anderson, at least we won't have to look at fucking Otis and Gable. And guess who they wrestle? Gallows and Anderson wrestle Otis and Gable. The OC versus the new club. I'd like to take a club <laughs> and beat them all over the head with it. All of them? All of them. Every single one of them. <laughs> and then go back and, and hit the places I missed. <laughs> so... <laughs> Gallows and Anderson win the match, and then here comes the Judgment Day. And I think they think that it's good television writing when they have one segment flow into another like that, but that means that you're seeing the same people involved in something out there for fucking 30 minutes at a time. So the Judgment Day come out, and they do the same thing I just did. They made fun of Too Sweet. Same old shit. We've seen it before. But then Finn Balor is taking credit for Star. Was he in the original Bullet Club? He was. Okay. He, he was then, the original leader of the Bullet Club. Okay, that's right. He was the original one. And then somehow it was like the NWO in, in the dying days of WCW, and they let everybody, including Virgil, in. They let the Cucamonga kids in, and they let everybody in, right? What happened was all the prestigious leaders of the Bullet Club, one by one, got signed by American promotions like WWE or later AEW, so they would leave their group, they'd have to find a new leader, went from Finn to AJ to Omega, and then they started just filling the ranks with seemingly anyone who just wanted to mug for the camera and do someone else's hand signs. Okay, well, anyway, he's mad because he started the thing, but now they've actually got a cool group, even though Finn doesn't belong in it. So they're in a cool group now, the Judgment Day. Priest does the best talking to represent these people. 
And uh, it sounds like he has a man's voice. They made a challenge for a match at Crown Jewel. And uh, uh, again, because you don't want to have an evil authority figure doesn't mean that you shouldn't have somebody to make these fucking matches. And Adam Pierce was doing it for a while there, but now the guy's just, well, I want to fight you in Saudi Arabia. Okay. Can you imagine if Ali and Frazier put the fucking Thrilla and Manila on that fucking way? Oh, I'll fight you. Okay, Tuesday. We'll we'll be there in Manila, the Philippines. There's contracts. There's promotion. There's all, if you're Don trying King. to... Don King, if you're trying in any way to make this look legitimate, ah, God damn it. So now they, they all just make their own matches, and then Dominic and AJ go back and forth, and AJ challenges Dominic for tonight. And Rhea accepts for him, and we're 30 minutes into the show, and that's all we've seen besides that three-minute fight at the top of the program is tag team match and talking. I was already getting sick of the Judgment Day a little bit, even though I really like I really like Priest and Rhea and Dominic together. They all got size. There's an age difference that's obvious. The whole Dominic's fucking Rhea thing is working. Yeah. He seems like a different guy, but if you want to make me really sick of them, put them with AJ and the fucking OC. <laughs> that is a way to drive people to jump off their roof. Oh my God. 